Hi, everybody. My name is Daryl Ekman, uh, Ekman Wealth Management. And today uh, we've got Clint Carpenter uh, and also Chris Venezia. And we want to talk a little bit about what's going on with the markets, uh, with the economy, the world economy. Just uh, we think that this makes sense for us to give you uh, some ideas of what we're seeing out there, try to give you a little bit of sense of. Um, with all the things that seem to be uh, happening, uh, lots of contrary information out there. Seems like everybody's got an opinion, but the opinion changes. Uh, lines are being drawn and then they're being erased very quickly and nothing really seems to have traction. Uh, the dollar and other currencies, uh, the stock market, the bond market, domestic and foreign have been uh, really moving around quite a bit. Uh, Yellen has uh, said that there's no recession uh, looming out there, but oil prices, as a leading indicator, seems to be saying something different. Um, office space values seem to be uh, uh, having more trouble. Shopping malls seem to be morphing into more of a working, uh, workable situation. Uh, so there's just a whole lot of things going on right now that... Uh, Quite honestly, we're, we're going to be forthright with what we say to you all today and uh, try to give you some clarity here. So, uh, Clint, let's just start with you. What do you want to tackle today? We're going to try to keep this short, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I can be brief. Um, you mentioned, you know, commercial real estate. I think that's an interesting predicament, obviously, from the work from home, you know, scheme that is kind of unwinding now, but that's, I think maybe a little too, too heavy to wrap our minds around. So uh, maybe something more relatable is, you know, residential. Um, everybody's pretty interested in what's going on with the real estate market right now. Uh, and for good reason, because it's, you know, it, it, it's not following a, a very clear path, I would say, but I was pretty struck by something I saw just a few days ago. I was just reading, I think this was some data from the one of the, the feds, I think the Atlanta Fed office, uh, but it's also just, it's kind of out there in the public realm is just how much housing has changed in the last few years since this kind of, you know, craziness that's happened with the pandemic with home values, but also with interest rates, right? If we're talking about the Fed and inflation and interest rates, how that's affected things. But um, I read that, you know, three years ago, the average home price existing home price in the U.S. was $280,000 and rates were about 3.1%. So that had your monthly payment about $973 for that much house. Pretty reasonable, I would say. Today, though, um, you know, the average existing home price is $400,000, so up from two eighty, dollars And, you know, the, the interest rates are 6.6% on a 30-year mortgage. So that mortgage payment is a little over $2,000 a month. So that's over double, um, you know, for basically the same amount of house, if we're talking about about averages. So that, you know, that's uh, probably painting a picture a lot of people already are experiencing, whether you're looking to buy or sell, or you're just kind of interested in real estate. But I think it's pretty interesting to, to, to look at things from a numbers perspective, you know, take you 20% more uh, of a down payment, basically, that's an extra twenty thousand dollars if you're putting twenty percent down um, on that same house that you could have bought three years ago with these interest rates. So, um, you know, lots of reasons that that could be happening. Inventory is very low because of interest rates. People are, are waiting to sell um, because they don't want to go out and buy something. You know, they've got a nice maybe three percent mortgage. They don't want to go out and spend six, seven percent on their mortgage. Yeah. Yeah, the golden handcuffs of that low rate mortgage kind of handcuffing people to their properties. You know, they're not going to sell and go get the six, seven percent mortgage. Uh, there's so much noise that Daryl's been talking about. And there's so many nuanced ways to really look at the economy. I was, I was trying to think how can you simplify it as much as possible when you're looking at the second half of this year. So for me, the big question I've had for a while, and I think it becomes an even bigger question for the second half of this year, is you know, can the American consumer keep spending? Can Americans keep spending at the rate they've been spending? Because 
ultimately that's been in the face of inflation and higher rates and, and everything else that's kind of been thrown at, you know, the U.S. economy. The thing that has helped to make the U.S. economy, well, not helped, the thing that has made it so resilient has been that the American consumer continues to spend. Greatest examples, airline prices. Airlines, airfares are up, you know, 50 plus percent year over year, They've probably doubled since pre-pandemic times. People are still flying like crazy. If you look at TSA data, if you, you know, go fly, you'll note airports are packed. People are flying. So the big question I have is, can the American consumer keep spending the second half of this year? How do we gauge that? To me, the simple way to look at it is, do people have jobs? If people can continue to have reliable income streams, you know, as inflation slowly moderates, still high, slowly, slowly kind of coming down. If people can continue to keep those jobs, if incomes can remain stable, you know, that's a positive sign. So the numbers I've put on it is if we can get a couple months from now, see an unemployment rate sub 5% and see inflation on a CPI around 3%, to me, that's, that's a healthy spot. Like that is, to me, if we're a couple months from now and that's what I see, I feel like the U.S. economy is staying resilient and holding up okay. It's really going to be, for me, the second half of this year, watching the labor market. How are businesses reacting to these higher rates as those take hold? You know, what adjustments have to be made? Because outside the U.S., you're seeing pain in Europe. It's some figures Friday morning. Um, Asia, China's recovery is not going as planned. They're trying to stimulate things. So for me, the question is the labor market. People keep those reliable income streams. Uh, if they can, if there's a good chance the U.S. economy can stay resilient despite all of the headwinds that have been thrown at it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we promised to keep this kind of short today. So, Clint, why don't you wrap it up and just talk a little bit about how the portfolios, um, how do they look right now? What's your strategy yeah. given the situations? Yeah, good idea. I think, you know, remaining um, cautious, if you will, participating in the rally that we're seeing with the stocks that we do own, maybe doing a little bit of nibbling here and there where we think there's good opportunities, you know, or rebalancing really, because especially if you look at the NASDAQ, which was down so much last year, but up also so much this year, you know, there's some rebalancing that takes place when those positions increase so dramatically. You know, if you have a portfolio that only has 5% in tech, suddenly you've got a portfolio that has 10% in tech, you've got it cut that down to meet your target. Everyone's different, of course. But the, the main thing, I, I think I said this, um, you know, in most of my client calls and in previous recordings that we've done, but it's just nice to have the bond market back, be able to fall back on some guaranteed, or not guaranteed, but virtually guaranteed debt, you know, just one of the safest things you can buy, make a nice interest rate and kind of take your foot off the gas on a portion of the portfolio. So we're definitely taking advantage of that with uh, you know short and long term bonds, kind of everywhere in between, as appropriate for uh, you know client specific suitability. Okay, good deal. Well, thanks guys. Um, we'll have more for you later. And for right now, thanks for tuning in.